today's nodes, we're going to add and subtract rational expressions with unlike denominators. I give you an example here that I wanted you to recall that's all numeric. I'm adding two sevenths plus one third. You can see that I went from a denominator of seven and three to the same denominator of 21. So this fraction on the left, 2 over 7, I multiplied by 3 over 3. And then the 1 third, we multiplied by 7 over 7. I did that so I can have a common denominator for both because once I have common denominators, we keep the denominator the same. So that stayed the same to my final answer. And then step number two, we combine the numerators, which means to just add or subtract them depending on the problem. And then number three, well in this case I was done, 13 over 21. But if possible, I want to simplify. I can't simplify 13 over 21. 13's prime, they have no common factor as 13 doesn't go into 21. So that's my final answer. So at the top of the page and then top of that table or box, it says to add or subtract rational expressions with unlike or different denominators, rewrite the fractions as equivalent fractions with a common denominator. Now, equivalent means when I type both two sevenths and I change that to 6 over 21, that means the decimals are going to be the same. It's the same number. If I reduce 6 over 21, 6 and 21 have a common factor of 3 divided out to 7, we're back to 2 sevenths. So I'm not changing the value of it, I'm just making it look different so that I can perform the operation of addition or subtraction. And when I multiply, so in this case I multiply by 3 over 3, 3 over 3 is 1. Multiplying by 1 does not change the value. 7 over 7 is 1. So we're not changing the value. And remember, whatever you do to the denominator, so if I have to multiply the denominator by 3, you also have to multiply your numerator. Okay? Within the table below it says to find the least common denominator. We're going to take that out because we don't necessarily have to find the least. We just need a common denominator. Okay, so let's take a look at example number, or example one. Directions say for all values in the variable for which they are defined. So that means we can, we don't have a denominator of zero. So again, we can't perform any operations with fractions whose denominators are zero. So stating that up front, we have defined fractions, now we need to combine and simplify. So in question number one, we have a denominator of three and a denominator of five. You can find the least common multiple of them both, but all you need to do is multiply this fraction by this denominator. So multiply by five, both the numerator and denominator, and then we multiply this fraction by the three. Whatever you do on the bottom, you have to do to the top as well. So now five times x plus one is five x plus five, over five times three is 15 minus, five times three is 15 for the denominator, and three times x minus one is three x minus three. Now this looks just like the problems we were working on last class. Common denominator, so I want to keep the denominator of 15, and now I'm going to subtract. 
Because of the subtraction symbol, I want to go ahead and change both of my signs here. And now 5x and a negative 3x combines to 2x, and 5 plus 3 is 8. Now, 2 does go into 8, and that has a uh, GCF, so I can change it to 2x plus 4, but that doesn't allow me to cancel anything with the 15. Because of that, because I can't cancel, I don't need to factor. So this is the answer. And number two, when there's no denominator, I want to put a 1 underneath, because 6 divided by 1 is 6. And I'm going to multiply, again, this side by that denominator, so 1 over 1. I'm going to multiply this side by x minus 3 over x minus 3. So my common denominator is x minus 3 times 1, or just x minus 3. In the numerators, I have 6 times x minus 3, that would be 6x minus 18. And then 3 times the 1 is 3. Denominators are now like, so keep the denominator the same, and then combine the top. Well, there's nothing over here on the right side to combine with 6x, so I bring it over. And negative 18 minus the 3 is negative 21. Now, 6 and 21 are both divisible by 3, so if I were to pull out that GCF, could I cancel? That would be 2x minus 7, and no, I cannot. So I don't need to factor, as I can't cancel, this is my final answer. And number 3, I'm going to multiply this side by x minus 2 over x minus 2 and then this side by x. So then this fraction, 3 times x, is 3x. Now I could distribute, but at the end, to simplify, we factor and cancel. So if I'm going to have to eventually factor, I might as well leave the denominator in factored form. So I don't want to distribute. And then minus 2x minus 4 over x times x minus 2. With the subtraction, again, I want to change the sign, so negative 2x plus 4. Now my denominators are the same, so I want to keep the denominator. 3x minus 2x is x, nothing to combine with the 4. So that's my final answer. Now anytime you have a denominator with an x squared in it, such as x squared minus 4, you're going to want to factor that first. And when you do, I get x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now that denominator has two factors, where this one only has the one factor. And they share that factor in common. So to get the denominator that only has one factor, to have the 2, I need to multiply this by x minus 2. I don't necessarily always need to multiply both sides of the um, problem, or both fractions, by something that will give me a common denominator. If I just multiply the right side by x minus 2, I will get that common denominator of x plus 2 times x minus 2. So now I want to rewrite my numerators. I didn't do anything on the left side, so that stays x. And this is 1 times x minus 2, which is x minus 2. So now I have a subtraction symbol. I want to change the signs. And this x and this negative x cancel out. So my final answer is 2 over x plus 2 times x minus 2. I want you to take a minute before we uh, go further with 5 and 6 because I, the denominators here have an x squared and only this one denominator in the problem number 5 has an x squared. I want you to just take a minute and factor those expressions. So as you factor on your paper, I'm going to factor up here at the board.
Now, if I look at the denominators in number five, the left fraction has two factors in the bottom, and the right fraction has one. So we're going to look at the side that has the smaller number of factors, and we multiply that by the missing factor that I have on the left. So here they both have in common the x minus 3. So I need to multiply this side by x minus 8. So now my common denominator is x minus 8 times x minus 3. I didn't do anything to the fraction on the left, so that stays a 3. And 1 times x minus 8 is x minus 8. The only terms to combine in this problem in 5 are the 3 and the negative 8. So when I do that, I bring down the x, x minus 5, 3 minus 8 is 5, and then I keep the denominator the same. So that's my final answer. And number 6, they both have the same number of factors, and the only factor they have in common is the x minus 1. So in order for the denominators to be exactly the same, I have to multiply this side by an x minus 3, and then this side by the x plus 3, whatever factor is different from the other side. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top to keep the product 1 that we're multiplying by. So I'm just going to focus on the numerators at this point. I have x times x which is x squared plus 3x, and then minus, again, I have my denominator, um, x times x, x squared, outside negative 3x, inside negative 3x, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. So this is x squared minus 6x plus 9. I just wrote the denominators as squiggling lines because I'm just copying it over and over and over again until the very end. So I don't mind if you do that. And so let's distribute the negative. So minus x squared um, plus 6x minus 9. Now I'm going to rewrite my denominator to see if I can cancel any factors. Okay, x squared minus x squared, those cancels out, or those two terms cancel out. 3x plus 6x is 9x. Bring down the negative 9 all over x plus 3 times x minus 3 times x minus 1. 9x and 9 have a GCF of 9, so when I factor that, it becomes x minus 1. And then I can cancel an x minus 1 with an x minus 1. And we're left with 9 over x plus 3 times x minus 3 as an answer.